Good afternoon and welcome to the Fraxis live stream. My name is Pete Murray. I'm your host today, joined by Ed Beach, lead designer of Sid Meier's Civilization VI, and Carl Harrison, uh, gameplay designer for Civilization VI. Gentlemen, thank you for coming out and joining us today. Hey, happy holidays, everyone. It's great to be here. Yeah. yeah. So we've got an exciting show for you guys today. Uh, we are on part of our new uh, leader pass. So Ed, what is the leader pass for Civilization VI that we're looking at today? So we've talked about four leaders in our leader pass in the live stream that we did previously. Now we're gonna look at leaders five, six, and seven. And the leaders in our leader pass are all bundled into uh, clusters of three where they have some kind of thematic link. Uh, this time it's great commanders. So these are all military leaders that you want to be in charge of your civ when you're making that dramatic push to get more land and, and expand your empire and uh, you know maybe take down that neighbor who's been pesky on your border. So we can look forward to some awesome conquests today with our great commander's pack spotlight. But the first thing that we want to do is we want to show you guys some holiday spirit. So we've got a holiday card by Firaxis' own Michael Cody. He is an associate producer working on uh, Marvel's Midnight Suns. And uh, what I love best about Cody is every year he does this holiday card uh, featuring our characters. So we just wanted to say happy holidays to you guys. Thank you for being the best fans in gaming and uh, for supporting us over the years. But I think we've got some awesome commanders to show off. So let's go ahead and let's take a first look at the three leaders we'll be showing today. Tokugawa, Nader Shah, and Suleiman lead the great commanders in Sid Meier's Civilization VI. A brilliant strategist in both war and peace, Tokugawa Ieyasu unified Japan during the tumultuous Sengoku period and ushered in the Edo period, a time of unparalleled prosperity and enforced isolation. Tokugawa's unique leader ability is Bakuhan, which ensures cities within six tiles of the capital are always 100% loyal and, after discovering flight, receive extra tourism for every district. Although international trade routes produce fewer yields, domestic trade routes with specialty districts at their destination boost science, culture, and gold. As Tokugawa, build your empire close to keep it loyal and make sure to fill every tile with districts to maximize the bonus of both Tokugawa's Bakuhan as well as Japan's Meiji Restoration unique ability. While Tokugawa's strategy is patient defense, Nader Shah's approach is the epitome of active aggression. Known as the King of Kings, Nader Shah emerged in the 18th century to re-establish Persia in Central Asia. His rise was brutal but decisive, carving independence out for Persia away from the Ottoman domination. Nader Shah's unique leader ability is the Sword of Persia, which grants extra combat strength against units at full health. Cities not founded by Nader Shah also receive extra faith and gold on domestic trade routes. As Nader Shah, rush ironworking to unlock Persia's unique unit, the Immortal, and use your invincible army to conquer as many rival cities as possible. Connecting domestic trade routes from these newly annexed cities will further boost your economy, allowing for the purchase of more Immortal Warriors. Nader Shah's full offense can be irresistible if things are going his way, but Mutesham Suleiman can be a force to be reckoned with, even in the most dire of situations. A titan of law, culture, and war, Suleiman waged a 20-year war for Europe resulting in the complete control of the Eastern Mediterranean. Mutashem Suleiman comes with a new unique leader ability, the Magnificent, which grants bonuses to science and culture when in a golden age, and extra combat strength to units when not in a golden age against civilizations who are also not in a golden age. Use your Barbary Corsairs to raid during Golden Ages to fund and modernize your military. Then launch them at your weaker enemies during a Normal or Dark Age to take full advantage of Suleiman's strengths. Although Mutashem Suleiman does not have the help of his trusty advisor Ibrahim, nor his Janissaries, he can still be a threat even during a Dark Age. Be it using districts, Golden Ages, or the skulls of your enemies, how will you command your way to victory in Civilization VI? Awesome. All right. So we've got a lot to show off today, and uh, I think we should jump right in. How does that sound to you guys? Yeah, definitely. So we've done a little bit of a role reversal today. This time I'm driving, and Carl is color commentator, sort of the reverse of last time. So I'll give you the basic situation. Um, we're going to go quickly today. We have three leaders 
to show, and so we're playing all of our games on quick, uh, not on quick speed like usual, but we're, we moved it all the way up to online speed. Um, and we're on Prince difficulty because we didn't want to kill ourselves while we were trying to move quickly through our content. So let's take a look. Before we do that, let's go ahead and we're going to jump to our video on Tokugawa. All right, sorry to interrupt you, Ed, but now that everybody knows about Tokugawa, let's go ahead and tell us about the situation in the game that we're looking at right now. So we have uh, started the game on an Island Plates map. Island Plates, as most players will be familiar with, are not, not teeny little archipelago-like islands. They're large enough to get several cities down, but they're definitely a constrained way to play a civilization game. Um, Japan is great in this type of situation. Tokugawa is also great in this type of situation, so that's why we wanted to, to highlight what you might do in this type of dilemma with the new Japan um, uh, leader. So we're in this situation where we have not explored a lot of the map. We're only um, on turn 43. We have met one of our neighbors, which is the new leader that we introduced from the Great Negotiators Pack, Queen Nzinga. Mm -hmm. uh, she is strong and cares deeply about uh, the continent that she's on. So she, she economically uh, does well on that continent and she has an agenda that makes sure that um, she probably pushes against anyone else on her continent. So, so that right there, that's a big dilemma for us as well. Um, we only have found two comfortable spots for cities along this western edge of the landmass. Uh, so we, we're anticipating we're gonna have to push east and that's something we're gonna need some help with. Um, you know, what's the right way for us to expand? We have um, a settler lens view here that I can show that does um, hint at the fact that we could slip a city in here where this barbarian camp is. The only other option we would have is to take out the city-state of Mitla. So we're going to have to do one of those to expand and get a large enough empire uh, to really get an economic foothold that we need on this continent. Okay, so if you are following us on Twitch today, uh, we have a poll that are running on Twitch whether or not you think we should uh, take Mitla as the city-state for where we should settle next, or take that barbarian camp. So that is a reminder to anybody who's following us on Twitch. And if you're watching us on Twitch or YouTube, uh, we've got some surprises to give away today for our fans on Twitch and YouTube chat. All you have to do is type exclamation point entered to be entered. And if you're chosen, we'll DM you uh, with something for the holidays. Now, Carl, uh, we've got a new leader for Japan, and we remember from uh, Civilization VI playing as Hojo, Japan is really all about the positioning of the civilization, how you're making use of the adjacency bonuses of the different districts. Uh, so now that we've got these internal trade routes and we're getting ready to build kind of a, a compact empire, how do you think we're going to build out from here? What would be... Uh, so yeah, Tokugawa is really uh, different from Hojo in that rather than getting all kinds of uh, coastal combat bonuses, uh, they focus on in international trade routes, or excuse me, um, internal trade routes, not international ones. They actually get penalized on international routes. So we want to get uh, these four cities up and running as quickly as we can, um, whichever way we decide to go, Barbarian Camp or Mitla first. Uh, and then we want to create those trade routes internally so that we can uh, boost the yield as much as possible. Um, and we do get bonuses for all of the specialty districts like campuses and commercial hubs uh, in our own cities. So we already have um, a campus and a commercial hub up in Tokyo and a campus up uh, in our second city there so that we can start benefiting from those and get the bonus yield. So in setting up this save, and I want to thank Sean Wilson from our QA department who helped us with all the save preparations this Thanks, week. Thanks, Sean. Um, but his uh, thought was that we should uh, focus on harbors because that allows us to get more trade routes. Uh, we are on, in an island type of situation, so that type of naval gameplay is, is strong for us. And this is a perfect um, tile right here. It's not um, adjacent to a naval resource, adjacent to uh, other districts. Uh, so in a couple turns, celestial navigation will be complete, and we can go ahead and put a, a um, harbor there. Now one thing to show is how strong these trade routes were. Here is the trade route to Tokyo. I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, repeat that route, get it going again. And 
Uh, that's why we need more cities, though, because right now we only have two cities that can send those domestic trade routes back and forth. Once we get three, four cities, all of a sudden there are lots of possibilities, and we can get quite a few of those trade routes going. Right. Um, one other thing that I wanted to, to um, note is uh, that in preparing to expand into that extra city, we have uh, Tokyo building a settler, so that, that has been progressing. But I think um, that our fans are going to want to see some combat action here, and based on the results of the poll, we're going to either go after the Barbarians or after Mitla. So we need to decide what to do to bolster our army to make it stronger for that attack. Right now, we only have two scouts, a warrior, and an archer. So Carl, I'd love um, some suggestions as to what we might want to do in terms of building additional military uh, to strengthen ourselves here. Yeah, so I think we, we definitely want to pump out some more warriors here. We're going to need melee units in order to take the, the city uh, or the camp, uh, whichever way we decide to go here. Um, we, we don't need a, a, a battering ram yet because Mitla doesn't have walls, so even if we do decide to go take care of uh, Mitla and, and capture that city, uh, we don't need to worry about uh, whittling down their defenses yet. It's possible that they'll get that up before we can actually take the city, but we'll see over the next couple of turns how that plays out. And I'd like to just take an opportunity again to thank Sean Wilson from our QA team. Uh, the inheritor of Carl's uh, previously held position, uh, who has put together this save for us. Um, that's very cool. Thank you, thank you, Sean, for that. Uh, Carl, having you on the stream and your uh, reputation as a bloodthirsty warlord, I'm almost embarrassed that we have an Armus. Uh, wow, okay, so the Civ fans, 61% want you to clear out the Barbarians. Wow. Interesting. Yeah, I actually is, thought they would ask us to go for Mitlas. Let's I, uh, go for the Barbarians. Yeah, this is great. This is great. So one thing to think about in terms of the Barbarians, we just queued up warriors for production in both our cities, but um, they have enough naval power here with this camp that is uh, perched out on this uh, promontory, rocky promontory uh, facing to the east, that uh, they're actually sending naval forces against Tokyo right now. Right. So do we need to um, think about building a second galley so we can get the um, uh, shipbuilding... Um, uh, Eureka. Eureka. Uh, I, I think and then so. Quite, yeah, that, to me, um, it looks like a naval component to that attack on the barbarians is going to be important to us. Yeah, so, so we should get the second warrior out and we can start moving our, our two warriors and potentially our archer um, over to that camp, but then yes, I think we should focus on a second galley, get that out uh, to defend against any other naval units that they might produce, and once that's done, we can go back to working on our settler so that we can go settle that spot after we clear the camp out. So yep. just as a reminder, uh, Tokugawa's uh, whole deal is that he is about turning uh, trade routes internally so that they provide bonus culture, science, and gold for the specialty districts in, uh, in the city, and um, it's going to be... Uh, part of that whole play style with Japan where you're building a very compact uh, empire and then instead of sending external trade routes, you're going to be sending them internally. So this kind of uh, mimics his historical character as the, uh, the warlord of Japan, the shogun of Japan who, uh, who closed it uh, and then uh, brought in the uh, uh, why can't I think of the, the, the era? That the um, Sendoku era? The Sendoku era, yeah. yeah. So um, I don't know if everyone caught it, but while the barbarians were taking their turn, there were actually four different naval units yep, four um, ships hovering there. around the camp here. So We definitely if, are going to need another galley. <laughs> yeah, especially if they start putting out quadrireams and then they're like pinging us from, from a, a ranged attack. That's going to be awkward. Um, so we did have, have an envoy to spend. Um, I'm not sure we're going to stay friendly with Mitla long term, so I'm not sure it's worth investing there. But I'm right now, disagree with you. Right now, we both really? both yeah. uh, Nzinga and us have two envoys there. We could actually become suzerain there. I think we should, and and here's why. So we gain a couple of things by doing that. First and foremost, we get error score, and that can help potentially push us towards a golden age, which is going to be very important. And the other thing we get is visibility. There's a lot of land to the southeast of Mitla here that we don't have visibility on, and hopefully they have explored that way. When you become suzerain of a city-state, you get to see the land that they have discovered, so we'll be able to push that visibility further uh, into Congo's territory by doing this. So I think it's definitely worth it, right. even if we lose that envoy later by capturing them. So there's right, the well, error We do get error score for that, and I guess we've become their suzerain, and now we have the visibility, and uh, that's right. really useful. But Carl, 
an unexpectedly peaceful turn of events for your historical reputation. Well, you know, I, I have to say that my personal preference would have gone, been, been to go capture Mitla uh, because I, I, for some reason I don't really feel like uh, conquering barbarian camps that often. Just no particular reason why, just I feel an affinity for them, you know? Except for when uh, we were playing as Julius Caesar last yeah. Except for <laughs> when we were playing as Julius Caesar, but that's because Julius Caesar's whole ability is about taking out barbarian camps. Yeah. So the other thing that's nice to notice about Mitla is I believe it's exactly six tiles away from Tokyo, which means that it would remain, if we were to take it, uh, we'd have 100% loyalty within it. So even though it's uh, so close to Congo, we wouldn't be experiencing any kind of loyalty pressures from there. Right, in the settler lens, we were seeing a minus two uh, penalty, loyalty penalty for settling in that spot, but we would actually get to ignore that and have that 100%. So the other important. thing about the way this map was set up is no matter which option we choose, um, there are iron uh, resources over there. Uh, we'd either pick up this one here, uh, nestled in the mountains, uh, if we settle near the barbarian camp, or their uh, Mitla's um, gonna hopefully be improving that one there soon. So we're actually, we should be well um, set up for iron as we go forward. Which is gonna be really important for getting our samurai online later. So um, the other thing that you'll notice is because we made the push to get unique uh, districts, um, it's not unique districts, but specialty districts out. Um, right. We ended up uh, with quite a few uh, campuses, uh, one in each of our cities, and that is earning us great people points at a um, hefty rate, enough to give us a great scientist. And that will give us some Eurekas that uh, will be useful to us as we proceed. And it's really nice to be this far ahead with science this early in the game, to really be able to push that tech. Again, the idea of being able to get to uh, the Iron Age faster than anybody else, uh, yeah. get those samurai up online, and then and then we'll solve our Mitla problem one way or the other. Speaking of getting samurai online, we just got the boost for apprenticeship from that great scientist. Uh, an apprenticeship is the tech that we need in order to have uh, samurai. Um, or are they in the specific tree? I, I don't remember. They replaced the, the man at arms, um, and uh, but I think they might be in a different spot here. Yep, they're in feudalism, so okay. never mind. Normally it would be apprenticeship because they do replace the, the yeah. man at arms, but uh, because we are Japan uh, with a unique uh, unit, it is in the feudalism civic instead, so never mind about that. All right, so we can get started on our harbor that we've been talking about. And notice um, that, as we've been pointing out before, there is a sizable um, adjacency bonus there for getting that harbor down. Um, that will also help our error score once that completes. Yes. So that'll be nice as well. Yeah, and we're going to advance towards the barbarians. I think their naval units are giving me enough trouble, though, that I have withdrawn our galley back into the city. Now, luckily, it is promotable, um, and we'll give it combat strength. Definitely. Um, so we'll be back out at sea um, to fend off the barbarian naval So I'd, I'd like to remind soon. everybody who's watching that we're actually playing on Prince difficulty on online speed because we have so much to show you guys today. Uh, so this is, uh, this is more intended to show off the capabilities of the leaders rather than being a uh, powerful intellectual challenge for our, <laughs> our strong civilization players. So um, again, Japan retains its character of building uh, civilizations that are compact, right. that, uh, that feed really well. So if you're used to that particular gameplay, that's going to be uh, very familiar to you. And what's nice is you can be in a situation like this where you've got uh, you know, a fairly constrained terrain, maybe heal, not at all it. sorts of great places to expand. Go ahead, Carl. I was going to say heal the unit. We're, we're yeah, attacking. We're, we're going to be aggressive. All right, be aggressive. We're about to finish one next turn. That's so true. I wanted to kind of clear out the room for it. I'm, I'm hearing aggression from Ed and diplomacy from Carl, and I really, I, I don't know what to think anymore. This is all... Again, it's against barbarians, so things are a little different than usual. Are you secretly working to support your barbarian friends? Why would you think that they're my <laughs> friends? There's no reason to assume that. So we got some questions from chat. So, uh, Kareem Dan Bright on Twitch says, does Tokugawa's tourism bonus apply to all districts or only specialty districts? Uh, it is only specialty districts. Um, yeah, they're, they're, here's his ability. So he gets plus one culture, plus one science, and plus two gold for every specialty districts at the destination city. Um, specialty districts are uh, campuses, uh, theater squares, harbors, things like that, commercial hubs. They do not include aqueducts, neighborhoods, the, the ones that are 
um, green roof to enable to be built multiple times. Um, so you want to build as many of those uh, in your cities as possible. Obviously, you're doing that anyway because that's where your, your great yields come from, particularly with the uh, Japan's Meiji restoration ability, um, as you were discussing earlier. Mm -hmm. um, so you, you want to uh, pack those close together, build as many as possible, and that's what, what boosts your trade routes and gives you that great yield off of them. And White Nerdy TV on Twitch asks, uh, will the next pack be available at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific uh, in the U.S. like last time? I don't actually know the answer to that question. Yeah, that's my assumption, but I don't know exactly. Now, stay tuned for more information. Yeah, and speaking of more information, uh, we do have uh, some additional details about that overall uh, release tomorrow. Um, so stay tuned here. Uh, people have been very um, interested in whether or not we've made any fixes, improvements, and those type of things. We do have some more information this time that people want to hear about later in the stream. Interesting. Very good. All right, so stay tuned. Got another question coming in from Twitch from Sirs, Sirs, Sir Zorgulan. Sir, hey, thanks for writing. For Axis Games, how did you decide on Tokugawa and Nader specifically to be the additional leaders for Japan and Persia? Um, well, for Persia, it was uh, a fact that we wanted to represent a different historical era. Persia in civilization games has almost always been that classic age Persians, the ones who are well known for fighting against the Greeks at Thermopylae and, and those other um, you know, historically amazing uh, battles. But there's a lot more to Persian history um, than just that period. And um, as we'll, we'll talk about Nader Shah later, but we, we can show why there's a great case for, for having him be a leader. And I do want to say that we will have that available at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific uh, when it comes out. So White Nerdy TV, thank you for standing by. All right. And so, I, I think Tokugawa, it's, it's a similar situation in that Hojo is actually very early in Japanese history. Yep. The Shogunate period is a, such a classic period of Japanese history that stretching it out and then giving them bonuses that are appropriate to you know, what that empire was doing later in history than mm -hmm. maybe we'd represented previously is a great way to go to give you a whole new um, avenue to play that civilization. Awesome, awesome. Thank you. I, I thought actually uh, Tokugawa era samurai were one of the first historical miniature armies I ever painted. So I thought you did it just for me, but I appreciate <laughs> the context that, uh, that you put in on that. Okay, so, uh, boy, we're dealing with a lot of ships up here, but uh, looks like we were able to get those guys dealt with. So, oh, no! <laughs> yeah, they keep coming. They keep coming. <laughs> this is terrible. Almost would have been easier to take mid it, it may have been. But we are finally approaching the outskirts of the Barbarian yeah. enclave here. And now that archer will be able to support uh, firing on ships from the coastline. He has been, but... Do you want him to press forward to the camp? If he moves here, he'll be able to get a shot in the camp next turn. Depends on how many ships come out of the fog next turn, Ed. <laughs> well, I have him. Uh, no, I don't have him over the left. Okay, yeah, we'll see in, in just a second. I do think you might want to switch your, your production in Tokyo back to the settlers so that once we clear this camp out, that settlers okay. can be yeah, already it's moving only, its way over there. only a few turns for finishing, but yeah, that seems like a good idea. Well, it's online speed. It's we fine. also... We're not going to be able to quite purchase a settler, I think, so... No, mm. too far away. Yeah. yeah, you're only getting 13 a turn. The, so. the market's great as well, though, because we want those domestic trade routes to go as soon we, as we We want the trade well. routes, and we want to get the, uh, the great merchant points so that uh, there's a lot of early great merchants that do give a free trade route slot, and that would be very beneficial as well. But with the base commercial hub down, we should be earning some of those points already. So we've got Nader Shash coming up. But we also have a question coming to us from YouTube. And uh, Ed, this is from Kalippo on YouTube. What is Tokugawa's agenda? So uh, we can go ahead and look at that. Um, I had that uh, commit to memory, and now it is gone. That's all right. Um, so, let's yeah. tell Nader Shah that we would like to sample his hospitality, and then let's go ahead and we'll take a look at that. Yep. So. One up. Down so, a little bit. Down a little. Nope. Nope. Don't scroll. So Tokugawa. Poor Ed. Tokugawa. Poor Ed. Oh, Tokugawa. I thought yeah, we were talking no, about a shot. Sorry. About. There. Just trying to see this. So detailed approach. Oh, scroll up. It's on the right. There it is. 
Sakoku wants to stay safe from conquest and dislikes those who have conquered other players' original capitals. Yes, yeah, so I think um, his agenda is very similar to what people have been used to in the game as the paranoid um, mm -hmm. random agenda. Um, so this is part of him playing in that sort of insular fashion that he just doesn't want to... Uh, he wants to just kind of turtle up and be a um, uh, defensive civ in that way. Okay. So... All right. Well, thank you for. I, I guess it, it may be closer to the turtler agenda than the paranoid one, but those two are right. have, have very, very uh, there are some similarities with those. Yep. yep. All right. So, will no one rid us of these turbulent barbarians? Do we have the policy card on for combat against barbarians? I. Think we do not. We not. <laughs> that was something we, we could, did when we were looking at this game yesterday, and we forgot to do it today. Is we really need to switch governments, actually. Um, I mean, unless we think we're so close now to... Um, I think it's worth staying in Classical Republic, but we, as soon as we finish our current Civic, we should swap that out. Um, okay. But we don't need the great scientist points. But yeah, right now, I don't even think we're going to pay any gold at all. No, no, swap. we do not. All right, so... So, and... Um, could definitely... Take a shot there. We're gonna have to sail that ship back yes. back into the city, all the way into the city. There you go. Right, and then put him up here into a blocking position. And I'm not sure we're gonna need these guys after all, but we'll send them on. Not yet. We will eventually. I'm sure we'll need them. Can't imagine what for. Oh, no, you know. Negotiating purposes. That's oh, all. right. Aggressive all right. negotiation. Aggressive, yeah, exactly. Forward thinking negotiating purposes. So, so ooh, ooh, that's rough. Oh. Pull that ship back, Ed. Well, what about taking the barbarian taking camp? We're taking the barbarian back. camp, but that ship needs to come back. <laughs> there, there we, we go. go. So a three era score there. for that. That's pretty fantastic. And let's Shoot. apply the... Archer to the ship that and is giving I think us such trouble. You should sail that ship, yeah, all, all the way, way over the other side. Yep. Just get it out of there for right now. So there's it's gonna And now the barbarians have no no home base. They will not be spawning new units at least. So that's not gonna be a bad site for a city location either with the the mountains there. You could, you know, drop an industrial district or or campus in the middle of that. Right. You know, get the uh, the adjacency bonuses for the iron uh, as well too. Now we've just received a delegation from Nader Shah. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Pete? I mean, I think we should be as nice as we can to Nader Shah uh, until later in game when we uh, later today when we might be a little bit ruder to him. So let's say his delegation is most okay. welcome. Also, that is a nice hat. Now we have not seen any of his units. What we've actually just saw is a city-state galley sail by us. Mm -hmm. And if we go and look at that city-state, my hunch is that they may be allied with... Looks like he's their suzerain, so... Yep, that's yep. how we found out about his presence nearby. We don't actually know where his homeland is quite yet. All right, so we'll... But we will be up to a good start when we get to, uh, to meet him. So I think at this point, um, you know, we've kind of... Given the, the Tokugawa rundown, um, we you know are going to proceed to get our settler built and uh, move him out into that area. Um, once again, I'll show people what the settler lens looks like so they can see the area where we're going to be um, adding another city. Um, obviously, eventually, Nzinga is going to have to be in our crosshairs, um, but we're going to move on and start to uh, talk about some of the other things we wanted to show today, I believe. All right, we got one more question before we leave this save, and it's from Artem. I believe I'm, please forgive my pronunciation, on YouTube. Uh, when will this update, The Great Commanders, be released? So it's coming out tomorrow. Fantastic. At 1 p.m. Eastern, uh, 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Pacific, yep. All right. So we do have some things that we want to share, uh, things that the community has shared with us over the, uh, over the course of this year. Uh, we've got some of the best Civ moments of 2022 that we wanted to share with you guys today. So um, we've got two cool things to show off in the first place. Um, this is what we're calling uh, a, the tribute. Uh, this is not the best map of the world. Uh, this is only the tribute. Uh, but this is a really nice uh, true earth map. I think that's, uh, that's pretty cool to see right there. You guys think of that? It's very cool. It all, all looks a little similar yeah. in certain ways. And then we've got, um, it, these are the 
uh, an, a Firaxis firewheel, uh, which happens to also include the longest Great Wall of China I have ever seen in my life. Uh, that is uh, that is pretty cool right there. Very impressive. I am. That is some I, dedication. Yeah, I can't quite imagine playing on that map. Um, just the amount of time it took, not only to, to create the map, but actually to complete the Great Wall of China on that uh, map, uh, is phenomenal. There's some busy, busy builders for that, uh, for sure. So. But because you guys are such fantastic fans, we have something we'd like to share with you, and we'd like to send uh, happy holidays from the development team here at Firaxis. So if you wait just a minute, we'll get that to you. It's great to have everybody here right before the holidays, We're taking a little bit of a break where um, you know everybody's here, we're having a good time. Uh, we shot this this morning, so we just wanted to share it with you. All right, so we're going to get ready to show our next uh, leader, and this is Suleiman the Magnificent. So as we get ready to do that, we're going to go ahead and show you a brief video for him. Azamet-i Topkapı'dan ben Süleyman, Kayzar-ı Rüm, selamımızı ihsan ederim. So Suleyman the Magnificent, one of my favorite leaders in civilization, uh, in part because that was one of the ones that I got to write the Civilopedia entry for, so he's always had a dear spot in my heart. Uh, let's go ahead and let's talk about him. So, Ed, tell us about Suleyman here. So, those who know the history of the Ottoman Empire, uh, Suleyman was the longest reigning sultan of the Ottoman Empire. He also uh, was in charge during their period of great prosperity and great uh, empire reach, where they actually um, reached all the way to the doorsteps of Vienna and almost took Vienna from the Habsburg Empire several times. Uh, so he was very feared in Europe. He was certainly one of their greatest leaders. Um, but what we wanted to do is reflect sort of that two-sided nature to his rule, uh, both the military aggressiveness when he pushed out the frontiers and was able to, to threaten to conquer quite a bit of um, both uh, Eastern and Central Europe, but also those periods of time where he was renowned for um, the cultural and scientific achievements of his people. So in his bonus, the Magnificent, um, and the Turkish word for Magnificent, which I won't try to pronounce, is, <laughs> is there in parentheses after his leader name when you're trying to select him. Uh, from among all the leaders that you have to choose when setting up a game right now. Um, so in a golden age, he's going to produce that extra science and culture, plus 15% of each. It's, it's a time where he can you know, speed ahead in the tech tree, get some great advantages, and put you in a great position to be ready for another push to make your empire larger. And so the, those times when he's not in the golden age, that's when he should look for a civilization to uh, perhaps target uh, for some ex um, expansion. And then he'll have some combat bonuses. The way those are set up is he gets combat strength bonuses in those periods when he's not in the golden age if he's fighting another empire that's also not in the golden age. All right. Uh, so speaking of magnificence, uh, we have a question from ProTroid on Twitch. Uh, when selecting new leaders, how important is the presence of hats? It's very important. So one of the things that I've noticed is the hat meta has adjusted considerably over the course of civilization. So I think uh, these three new leaders really do a lot to adjust uh, the hat meta that we've, that we've moved towards. And I think Abraham Lincoln brings a certain understated hat meta quality oh, as well, too. I don't, so. I don't think it's that understated. I think it's very, you know, prominent. Do you think it's, do you think it's too much? No. Do you think it's an example of power creep in the hat meta? Per potentially power creep. I'll give you that. Okay. I like to think we're finding new gameplay niches in the hat meta. But let's go ahead and we'll jump into the game. Uh, so, Ed, walk us through this situation right here. So this is a situation where we are late in the age. We'll start by looking at the era progress uh, screen. And we can see there are only five turns left until the end of the age. And right now we are um, enjoying a golden age. So we are receiving those plus 15% bonuses in both science and culture, uh, which is terrific. Um, and to uh, add to that, we have uh, been working with some city-states. Uh, the city-states are down to the south of us. There is Geneva, 
and I believe the other one is Kabul. And if we remind players of the bonuses of those city-states, Geneva is particularly important uh, because they, uh, down here, they're uh, showing that they allow your cities to earn 15% extra science whenever you're not at war with any civilization. So that's our period. It's a period of, of peace and prosperity within the Ottoman Empire. Uh, we're gaining now plus 30% science and plus 15% culture. And if we go to any of our cities, we can see that reflected um, in those yields. Uh, down at the bottom of that tooltip, we see the plus 15% on culture. And over here, we see the plus 30% of science. So we're gonna enjoy that for five more turns. It has allowed us to actually, sort of our science has outstripped the um, technology that's embedded in our troops right now. Uh, if you look at the save, we have um, completed some wonders. We have the Terracotta Army, we have the Statue of Zeus, and we have Machu Picchu. And so with those three wonders, obviously that was able to get us a lot of military units. Um, and off to a great start, and some of them upgraded, and everything else that those wonders provide. But now we are getting behind a little bit, and we need to upgrade our army to keep it current with our technology, and then figure out what we're going to do with it during that next non-golden age. I have some suggestions. But uh, we did have a question, and it was from Tyrannus16. Uh, he said, uh, what about the beard meta? So again, our fans want to know, has the beard meta adjusted? I think Nader Shah brings some, some new entries to the beard meta. I think uh, uh, Suleiman's always been still, strong. Still a great beard, yeah. Strong on the beard meta. And uh, Mr. Lincoln. Um, Mr. Lincoln also changing the beard meta yes. a little bit. Um, Tokugawa, I, I, you know, no, no beard per se, but uh, but that, I don't know. He's a little, a little bit, bit of chin, chin bristles going on, yeah. and, and yeah. got kind of a, a nice mustache bit. So you know, again. Uh, Beard meta continues to, to change. We, we, so, we might even want to remind people exactly you know, thanks, what Thomas. Mr. Lincoln looks like. Yep. And um, what Nader Shah looks like. Yeah. That's a fantastic beard. And then Sulma. I, I dare say the beard is better than the hat in that case. <gasps> I think uh, that's a, that's a, that's a then, spicy take. With Suleiman, it's the other way around. Wow. wow. I don't wow. know if, if we want Carl dictating the, the, the beard and hat meta for, for our entire fan base. <laughs> we may want to get some more. That's, opinions that's my that. personal opinion. Coming personal back to opinion. what our community wants to uh, wants to know, uh, Quasi or on Twitch wants to know: Does Suleiman's combat bonus work against city states? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. No. Okay. Now we're going to first look at policy cards. Yeah. Um, because, because we forgot to do so last time. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> because we did not do so. All right. And because we're in the process of a major upgrade to our army, we've, we've actually bankrolled quite a bit of gold. And um, so we need to, uh, plus we have just finished uh, Civic that has allowed us to take policy cards such as uh, uh, the retainers or the professional army that can allow us to upgrade a discount. Now, I don't think we have, we have spearmen to upgrade and we have archers to upgrade. I don't think yeah. either of them require resources. Right. So it's really the gold upgrades that so we need to work on. Let's go ahead and do that. Yeah. And just as a reminder, that, that solar amount ability is just for major civilizations. It does not work against city states. So. And I don't think we need to worry about trade routes. We're going to be attacking and, not, and we're going to actually lose a trade route I think we have with one of our opponents. But let's talk about where we might, um, I'll, I'll work on upgrading the army here as we're talking, but we need to look over the map and see exactly what is going on in terms of enemies that we might target. Now, what is peculiar is that Nader Shah and his Persian Empire, uh, um, which is down to the south of us, and there's a giant mountain range blocking our path there, mm -hmm. has moved across over our city-state that were suzerain um, of Kabul, and they've actually settled over here in the east. And so I think we have something, again, where we might want to get some input, where we're going to try to figure out, should we strike directly after the capital, or should we strike east and try to knock out this wayward settlement that um, really doesn't belong there in a territory that we've sort of staked our claim to with right. our city-states. So if you are following us on Twitch, we're going to run a poll. Should we attack uh, Mashhad, which is the capital of the Persians' uh, civilization right there, or should we go after Sparta? And I would just have to say that I can't imagine any historical incident 
in which the Ottoman Empire would be going to war with the Persians in the vicinity of Kabul. Surely this has never happened in the history of the world. Uh, let's go ahead and we will, yeah, so you're starting to upgrade those units? Yeah, and I'm not going to move them yet until we get the poll answer back okay. with, with some type of uh, read as to which way the, the community wants us to go with them. Uh, but we will go ahead and um, move as many troops as we can up towards the front and make mm -hmm. sure that they're ready to go and, and upgrade it appropriately. So um, I know uh, people are busily voting right now, but do you have preferences, uh, Carl? I'd probably go after Sparta, to be perfectly honest with you. That is my territory. Well, it's interesting, actually. Because Sparta currently does not have any walls. And the other part of the Ottomans' ability um, is the Great Turkish Bombard. That's the, the standard I'm moving, Ottoman bit. I'm moving a trebuchet right, right So they, they get bonuses uh, with towards building their uh, uh, siege machines, and then they also get a combat bonus with them. So I think that it might be interesting to to double down on that, build some more trebuchets, move them on down, and attack the capital, which does have walls, because we'll be particularly effective there. Oh, I'm I'm not disputing the fact that we're going to attack the capital at some point. Like, at some point. At some happen. point. Sure. These are great commanders. We're not we're not you know negotiators or peacemakers. We're we're here to win on military victories. But I think for now, I'd probably start with uh, Sparta. All right, so got some upgrades going, Ed. Looks like yeah, you've got stuff done. Let me, let me done. Uh, move at least a few forces in each direction. I'm, I'm a little impatient to get the army rolling towards some type of target, and it wouldn't hurt to have forces scouting towards these targets. We actually have a swordsman down here um, that's... Well, you can move the swords. Oh, well, you're too late now. Nope. I was going to say you can move it back up and I and could, it. but... Um, All right, well, it looks like chat... Almost 70% of chat, uh, we're just one short of 70%, wants us to go after Sparta. So that's okay. pretty nice. Let's all go right. ahead and we'll do that. I, our, our community seems very measured today, that they're taking probably the most deliberate, uh, sensible option. And, and I, I think they're less bloodthirsty. Maybe it's the holiday spirit that's pervading our... I was actually expecting them to like go for the capital or go for that tricky target. But I, we'll you know, let's, uh, let's go ahead and we'll, we'll take out Sparta. I think that'll be perfectly fine. So do we need to denounce Nader Shah before we do that? Yes, let's okay. go ahead and now I know um, Persia has a reputation for um, launching those surprise attacks. We built that into that civilization with, with the Cyrus leader ability. Um, but we're going to show them the right way to do things. Right. I think, right. So I think we should denounce it, denounce them, and um, go ahead and try to formally declare war on them. Yeah, all right. He seems mad. He That's all right. Mad. We'll fix that problem. You really don't like that hat? I didn't say I don't like the hat. I said I think the beard is better than the hat. They're both fantastic. That is a hot take. That is a hot. I don't Just dance. because both things are good doesn't mean one can't be better than the other. So, in terms of things to construct in Istanbul, do we need more for this military campaign? So let's go down and take a look at Sparta real quick, just to uh, see what's in the vicinity of it. It looks like it's pretty isolated. Uh, it's near that volcano. It doesn't look like he's got... So those are Kabul's forces nearby, and we're the suzerain of them, so I don't see anything coming in particular. I guess the only risk would be whether or not uh, they get walls up in time before we get there. So, Carl, what do you think? Uh, I, we do have a trebuchet on the way down there, so I think we're probably in pretty good space. In fact, you had started to send our military in both directions. We have so many units as a result of the, the Statue of Zeus. The Statue of Zeus. I, I think if we send uh, force in both directions, we're probably we okay also, to, to I launch mean, both attacks. I feel like if we start putting pressure on here, then he's going to move across. Move over and then we come down, right. With, with Kabul, we have pretty good visibility over exactly what he's doing, as long as we maintain the, the suzerainty there. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we'll, we'll go ahead and uh, I don't think we need our whole army that way. So uh, in terms of build decisions, do you want us to keep p pumping out military units or should we? We go to a dark age, like why shouldn't we? Right, yeah, capitalize on that. Okay. So one of the things that I was talking to, to Sean Wilson yesterday and, and he said there's this really nice ebb and flow to the way that you play as a, uh, as uh, Suleiman, where there's this, you know, you go into a golden era, you're in this era of peace, things seem to go in particularly well. And then um, as you go into uh, a dark age, if, if other people are doing badly, there's this great opportunity for conquest that happens as well, too. Right. So um, that looks like, I mean, that, that seems like a good way that you could sort of measure things out, especially as you can see 
going into a new era where you're not getting that error score, you can sort of plan ahead. It's like, ah, in five turns, I'm going to need to make some moves and you know, put some dark age policies in place that allow me to, to, to do well with conquest. Right. OK, and we have Hannibal as a great general um, who was available to us to begin with. Um, and that's actually kind of something that uh, we wanted to show or remind people that is possible. Um, when you're not in a golden age, but you want to try to make sure you build towards one yep. uh, for the next uh, era, it's great to have a great general leading your troops because some of those battles that occur in the vicinity of the great general will pick up error score um, because of his proximity. So that's... If you're going to war anyway, you may as well get some extra credit for doing it while yep. you're there. I believe he affects uh, classical and medieval era units, and we did just unlock uh, musket men, so we could upgrade that man at arms, but then he would no longer benefit from Hannibal. So potentially not the right move. It is interesting to note that uh, we do have musket men and not uh, Janissaries this time uh, with this version of Suleiman, and that is a pretty big change from what people are used to. Uh, normally, you you have your Janissary infantry units to go along with your bombard units, uh, and that is a very effective one-two punch. Um, so it, it is a, a different strategy and requires some adaptation, but the combat strength when not in a golden age definitely helps make up for that and allows you to be a little bit more flexible in your approach to your unit makeup. I notice you're, you're building a knight. We have a whole bunch of pikemen. Um, so we are, we are doing things a little bit differently than, than normal, but we have that flexibility as a result. So we have a second great general. Um, Timur is also here. Uh, so maybe send one ge general after uh, each of our targets? Yeah, that sounds good. So if you're following us on YouTube, we do have a new poll for you. Hat meta or beard meta? Which one is most important? Which one should we be most concerned about? Which one is shaken up the most by this new leader pack? These are the kinds of hard-hitting questions that we turn to you, the community, to help us create a more authentic Civilization VI experience. I'll be interested to see what YouTube comes back with. Uh, and just as a reminder, if you are following us on Twitch or YouTube, we've got some surprises that we're giving away. So if you type exclamation point enter in chat, you'll be entered. And if you're chosen, we'll DM you uh, with something for the holidays. So the industrialist Mr. Abraham Lincoln wants some of our iron. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't seem like no, a good idea. This is a terrible deal. <laughs> I'm not even a great sim player. That's a terrible deal. Carl, you taught me that. I did teach you that. Don't sell weapons to your to your enemies. Now, we just unlocked civil service, which does allow us to create alliances. And um, we have a couple uh, friendly uh, leaders. Uh, Tokugawa is one right now. But we're focused. We want to continue to uh, press forward, get ready to declare war. And so that's what we're going to uh, focus on right here. Speaking of focused, 60% of our people polled and voted for the hat meta. That wow. was quick. That yeah, was quick. Very yeah, quick. well, you know, there's no stopping hats. Looks like I was wrong about the beer. You, well, you know, you're allowed to have a mistake occasionally as long as you, it's about. They're pretty this. rare. Anyway, let's, uh, let's turn back to this, uh, this game. Uh, so it looks like we're going to do pretty well. So I guess my one question would be, let's say we take Sparta and we're rolling forward uh, from there. Going back to fight at Mashhad is actually going to be a pretty big logistical challenge. That mountain range that neatly protects our empire from, uh, from Persia is actually going to be pretty hard to cross. So would you continue to kind of come back directly west, or would you come back through our territory? I, I would head west, I think. It's going to, it would be, despite the terrain, I think it would be longer to move um, up and around than to just go straight through. Would you do that with? The, would you go home with the possibility of upgrading your troops as they pass through? I just upgrade them to Sparta before moving them over. Plus, um, the city-state territory in between Kabul is friendly to us. We got upgrade there as well. So we can That's upgrade true. there. I do think you have one more movement on your trebuchet there, and then all those other units you stacked up behind it can move forward one as well. Okay. Uh, yes, I did. I was trying to avoid having it be one of my leading advance units, but that's fair. It's, uh, it's always yeah. Okay. Put the slow guy up front. This is also good for day hikes as well, too. Put the slow guy up front. All right, and now we have some fast movers. Now, yeah. the knights we could send to either direction. I, I would think. send the knights around. We have such a large around, force yeah. coming down here towards Sparta, and again, they don't have walls yet, so I think we're probably fine there. Yeah. Let's get the support and, over. But that's why I've been focused on building knights um, in all our cities so that 
our secondary forces will have be quite mobile and fast. It would be, um, if you could get that knight through, depending on what's present. So let's say he starts shifting his forces to support Sparta. You could just run the knight in and just start setting fire on things. It should be, uh, should be a lot of fun. We also can get a rough idea of the size of his military compared to ours. <laughs> and so, um, it's I, nice that he tried. Yeah. I'm proud of him for trying. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, we've got how many turns left? We're about to transition to eras. So we go back to the era screen. We got two turns two until the next era. The next we also want to keep track as to when we can make the formal war declaration, and that's um, three, three turns. turns three out. more turns. Yep. All right. So we're going to go to our our dark age, and then we're going to be able to. Oh. Uh oh. Oh. Um, he out. has oh. called us out. So now we have a decision: Do we press forward immediately? Do we? You know, it is Persia. Persia isn't sort of the diplomatic role model in Civilization VI for perfectly formal entering into war. So, so maybe we just go All right. ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes okay. honesty is the best policy. Yeah. Yep. There you go. Nice. All right. Well, this will be good to see how this goes. Ooh, great person. Uh, and got, great scientist. Yeah, Chatelet. That's do Chatelet. That's awesome. And All right, so let's let's get some action going. All right, let's move into their territory. So he's got a spearman escorting a settler as well too. So you may want to take some of that trailing force and peel off a couple of guys to try to go after that. Right here. Yeah, that would be a great capture. We could settle a city sort of halfway between Sparta and our territory there. Let's get Timor down so he's close enough to all the units. That's Hannibal, I guess. Crossbowing. All right. Well, let's uh, let's push this on for a few more turns because we've got a bunch of stuff to show today. We've already showed off uh, Ieyasu Tokugawa of uh, Japan, uh, and we've got Nader Shah to show off later on as well too. We've had some of our favorite 2022 moments that have been brought to us by the community. And uh, we're really excited to be uh, coming to you right before the holidays as part of this live stream. So uh, thank you all for tuning in. Uh, thank you for everybody who's participating in our, our polls on Twitch and YouTube. And uh, thank you to Carl and Ed, who uh, took time from board gaming in the fun zone to come, uh, <laughs> come on the stream. Speaking of amazing community moments from this year and thank yous, we'd like to extend a thank you to the Civ Show and all the participants of the Civ Give. Uh, that was just this past weekend on uh, December 11th. They raised, I believe it was $38,000 uh, for Gamers Outreach for Children. Uh, so that was a phenomenal showing by the community and our, on our streamers. And so big thank you from us to all of you. That's fantastic. Thank you guys very much. That's a, what, what a wonderful community. What a wonderful way to, to have come. Best fans of gaming. Best fans of gaming. All right, so Renaissance era, and things are not great. Well, they're not plus 30% great like they were last <laughs> yeah, time. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. So it's Otherwise. not the end of the world. They are plus four combat great. Yes, yeah. they are. <laughs> All right, so which one do you want to pick here? So I don't feel like we're going to do a lot of exploration. So Hicks. I also don't think we're sense. we're pushing our religion particularly strongly here. Yeah, monumentality might be good, especially if we take Sparta and we start throwing some districts down. Yeah. And if we take that settler, it could be mm -mm 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 -mm. Yep. pretty nice. Actually, the settler disappeared. He we'll moved. get it. We'll find it. It's moving back into their territory, and they can't settle in the middle of cities that already exist. That's true. So. All right. So let's kick this off. Uh, all right, how are we open, gonna do this? Open with the trebuchet. Okay, well let's look at the combat bonuses that are showing down at the bottom. So first of all, I'm, I'm not gonna open with the, the pikemen, but just this showing that we're getting uh, combat strength from our great general, from our oligarchy, and we're also getting it from being in a golden age against an opponent who is not in a golden also, age. Uh, yes, for us not being in a golden age and having an opponent in the same situation. So we have shown off that Oh, but you didn't show off the amazing additional plus five combat bonus from our trebuchet, thanks to Great Turkish Bombard, the that's other true. Ottoman ability. Yeah. Uh, so we are getting additional bonuses there, and that's what we're seeing with that massive hit, nearly 50% of the city's health right off the bat. I think we're, we all need these yep, three units, and we're good to go. <laughs> this is the fastest oh, oh, no! units. <laughs> oh. Nope. So Very effective. Yeah. Nicely done. All right, so 
We want to keep the city? Keep oh, yeah. City. You want to keep, keep the city. city because it's got a volcano right there. All cities smoke a little bit, right? All mountains smoke a little bit, right? Correct. Yeah, I've right. heard that line before. Yeah. Somebody around here might have written it. It might have happened. This is a good line, Carl. You did a good job with that. Okay, so um, that then, we're going to open up uh, the rest of our campaign. We could go in the direction of Mashhad. We could continue to the west. Lots of possibilities as well. But let's take a moment and let's look at some content from the community that we've, uh, we've got for you to share. Uh, the first thing that we've got is uh, one of our favorite community moments is the least doomed uh, civilization in the world. I'm sure everything is just, everybody is just passing through. Have you ever done this to somebody stacked completely up on a border? So, you so the, the border Never. warning that we just got yeah. um, from uh, Nader Shah, do, yeah. do you think that perhaps a border warning was issued in this case? It seems, it seems possible. I'm yes. willing to admit that, that it might have come out. But uh, all right, so and our next one is called Best Vacation. And honestly, I think this is amazing. Who wouldn't want to build Petra in front of Petra? I think this is one of the coolest things that our, our community does. Uh, images of wonders being built in front of wonders. It's so cool. It's, you know, just, it's an amazing part of history that we're able to bring to everybody and that they are able to then share back with us. So that, I, I think that's... And they're really wonders neat. that people have been able to take laptops to with our game running on it that, you know, I never thought oh, I yeah. would see that. I um, mean, Petra, as an example there. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, yes. yeah that's a, that's a, that takes some dedication. It for does. Sure. And uh, for access is Kevin Schultz, uh, you know, taking his laptop to the Great Wall. I think he took a switch to the Great Wall of China and built the Great Wall of China on and, the Great Wall of China. And I have heard talk that the Amundsen Scott uh, Research Center has yep. also been in play for this kind of thing, and that's that's yeah. very incredible. incredible. That's yes. amazing. So just uh, you really are the best fans in gaming. Absolutely. All right. So we're going to get to our final leader, Nader Shah of Persia. Uh, we're going to take a moment. We're going to show you a brief video about Nader Shah. سوم اسبان بار دیگر زمین را می لرزاند و جهان از شنیدن نام نادر نفس در سینه حبس می کند. All right, so we're getting ready to go into our final segment. This one on Nader Shah, the third of our three commanders in the Great Commander Pack uh, for the Civilization Six Leader Pack and Persia, great civilization, one that's been fun to return to. How is Nader Shah going to fare in our game today? So Ed, take us into the situation. So Nader Shah is a little bit later in history uh, than Suleiman was, but it was absolutely the case that the Persian Empire and the Ottoman Empire throughout that Renaissance period were great rivals of one another. Uh, so he happens to be in a situation where Nader Shah and his Persian Empire um, has run into two other leaders. And lo and behold, they're sort of the same two leaders we've been talking about in terms of hats and beards. Yep. We have both Lincoln and Suleiman facing poor Nader Shah and his empire. Now, he's doing fine uh, because he focused on getting immortals out. And um, immortals, uh, if everyone remembers, are the Persian unique unit. And they're very strong initially. And so that has allowed our new um, Persian Empire to get out of the gate with two city-state conquests. So both Bandar Brunei and Volan here have been uh, conquered. Um, the reason we wanted to go for conquests right away rather than settling is with Nader Shah's ability, the sword of Persia, uh, that was a uh, term that was applied to him because of all of his military successes and conquests. Um, he actually gets uh, a trade route bonus, again, a, a domestic trade route bonus like we were seeing previously with Tokugawa. Uh, but this time it is when that trade route is initiated in a city that he did not found. Okay. And so the best way to get cities you haven't founded is to take them from your neighbors. <laughs> and so he has gone ahead and done that. Now, he gets a faith and um, a gold bonus to those trade routes, and it stacks right on top of the already existing Persian uh, golden culture a bonus to trade routes. From so, satrapies. Yes, from satrapies. So we'll see that right out of the gate we can uh, look at one of our trader units and we're going to have very rich uh, trade routes going, say, either back to our capital or to the other city uh, in our empire. That's fantastic. And so the other thing that I think we have to discuss here a little bit is 
We just picked on Nader Shah in that last game, and Suleiman was not treating his empire kindly. And so I honestly think this is an opportunity where we almost have to make a denouncement. So now that we are playing as Nader Shah, we need to go back to ourselves playing Suleiman and say, how does it feel? to be denounced, and I think that is an excellent idea, so let's go ahead. He already and, doesn't like us, well, so yeah, if we yeah. look at this, you know, we can see uh, that, that he's not doing anything in terms of, he's got an unfriendly relation, relationship with us. So I think we should just go ahead and denounce it. We have, maybe those grievances that we have against him are from a previous game, but. Yeah, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's make things worse. This uh, is always a, always a possibility we save. So. We also don't have to worry about uh, declaring a surprise war against him because that is Cyrus's ability, is focusing on surprise war. So now that we are not Cyrus, we do not have to uh, do surprise war. We can do formal war or other um, causes belli. So denouncing definitely is the right call here. Right. So because um, Nader Shah does have that bonus against undamaged units, you do get a little bit of that a little bit something like that surprise war effect where if you can punch first you can punch harder right exactly and and that continues to be true for for all undamaged units um so that uh does persist even if the war has been going on for a while um and it is very useful in a lot of different situations so um just in terms of the local diplomatic situation there are several city states uh in between our empire and the Ottoman Empire, similar to, to the last time we were looking at it. We are suzerain over one of them, which is Preslav. Now, I just want to show Preslav because the map generator has just put it <laughs> in the most defensible city-state city position ever, and I just found this... That's you know, your new amazing. science capital. I mean, you're just going to have to take it. It's going to suffer, but like yeah. you're going to suffer, but that's your new science But capital. also the boldness of them to settle here. Mount Rainier is like right in their face, uh, yeah. directly east of the city. And they are undaunted by that. They see the river cutting through this swath of mountains, and they had to go for it. Amazing. You know what else is amazing? Our, our, our chats have been polling who has the better hat, uh, Lincoln, Nader Shah, or Suleiman. Suleiman wins with 65%. Wow. People wow. loving that majestic uh, onion hat of his. And uh, really... That is why they call him Suleiman the Magnificent. That's a dominant it performance is a, it is a by strong, strong our performance. Ottoman leader. Yeah. So thank you to everybody who participated in the conversation around the hat meta. Now, just for my own personal satisfaction, could we perhaps poll which one of those three has the best beard? Well, actually, we're joining another poll right now to find out whether Nader Shah has a better hat or a better beard. There we go. I'm satisfied. Uh, I'm, I'm counting on you. Regardless of the outcome, I just think this is going to be entertaining. This is, our, this is very entertaining. Look at that beautiful trade route. That is a fantastic trade route. So, and this is early in the game, and those are strong yields for yeah. a trade route this, yeah, this early on in the game, because we're, you know, and this is a great time for us to expand as well, too. Got our immortals. We've got those strong trade routes. We just announced Suleiman, hat or not, so. Evidently, yeah, the community is not denouncing his hat. <laughs> no, 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 wrong, no right thinking people would do that. Also, while you're in chat, I want to take the opportunity to remind you that we do have some surprises for you. Uh, so if you're on Twitch or YouTube chat, just type uh, exclamation point enter to be entered. And if you are chosen, we will DM you with something. And it would be something nice for the holidays. So pushing down here, that's uh, going to be pretty so solid. So there's a battering ram in our army, but we do not see walls in Bursa. We only see walls in Istanbul. But that does mean they could be constructing them there in Bursa. That's true. Obviously, they have the technology for it, so I think we will... Well, if you zoom in on the city, do we see anything coming up? Yeah, they are building them. Yep. Mm. Okay, yeah, so... Push it a little bit. We may need to once again uh, forego the formality of the proper diplomatic channels for entering war. We'll have to see how fast we can get up towards the front here. Yeah, that's going to be. So um, our poll is in. OK, what's the result? What do you think the result is? I think the result is that his beard is better than his hat. You were correct, 80%. See, 80 I told you. I told you. Thank you, everybody, for, for participating in that poll. I, uh, yes, thank you, everyone. The hat that's is great. Fantastic. The hat is great. The beard is better. OK. Okay. Strong, strong claims. Yeah. Strong claims backed up by, by actual data. <laughs> Man. Okay. So, um, 
How are you going to, so are you going to surprise for him or are you just going to try to... I think we'll see, see what, what he, if he um, asks us what we're doing on his borders, just like last time, we'll, we'll go ahead and declare war immediately. But if we're able to move everything down there, I say we do a formal war. I mean, I guess the one advantage of taking the extra time to do it is that you end up with a little bit better positioning. Like if you were to surprise war on him now, it'd be sort of strung out. Right. You got the battering ram, that's going to help as well too, so. Okay, and we're repairing some of the damage we did to the city-state when we conquered it right before. So were you pillaging uh, it as you were trying to capture it? Uh, to heal units that uh, were outside and, and, and needed to be at full strength before they attacked. Sense. That makes sense. So I think what's, uh, what's great about this leader pack for Civ Six is uh, to be able to go back and, and see some of the civilizations that you know hadn't seen new leaders since base game. So Japan uh, now getting Tokugawa, you know, a new leader for them, a new a new way to play. Um, I've always really loved the Ottomans, so it's exciting to have Suleiman uh, as somebody that that you have an alternate persona for him. And uh, Persia was one of the early. Civs it was one of the well, early DLC civs. So yeah, right. prior to Rise and Fall, it was one of the first packs that we did yeah. in the spring of 2017. Wow. That feels like a long time ago. Just a few turns ago. I, just a few turns. Still, they were teamed with Macedon, and I love to play that Conquest of Alexander scenario. It's a I great mean, scenario. I, it's, it's not a, that many of our players play scenarios, but we have some great ones in, in the Civ Six collection. So I, I was actually talking to a friend about that particular scenario the other night. He was like, uh, do you have something for classical Greek and Persian wars? I was like, well, you could play the Conquest of Alexander if you think you're that good. Speaking of people who are good, we've got another great general. So that's going to help as well, too. And I think he's going to have to call us out for being on his borders on this very next turn. So we'll get one more turn to move up, I believe, and then, then we're going to get... Interesting piece of information about that scenario. When we were first making it, we actually purposefully made it impossible to beat and then worked backwards from there until it was just within the, uh, the allotted time uh, to make it as difficult as possible. And it really, really was difficult. Do you remember who the QA master was? At? I don't. So we actually, you were not the strongest player at that because we, no, had I to, wasn't. we had to take one member of our QA team and dedicate them to just becoming a specialist in that scenario. <laughs> so Albert Briggs, I'll give a shout out to him. That's right. And for several weeks, he was known as Albert Zandrich the Great. That's amazing. It's a great it's absolutely amazing. Yeah. So if you've ever wondered what it's like to work at Firaxis, uh, these this can be your daily assignments. So we've got a question, another question from Twitch. You bring light in. I wonder what happens if this leader shaves. Does he lose any combat strength? Uh, I don't think you want to run the risk of finding that out. So we've worked very closely with the modelers to make sure that the model is well balanced with the abilities of the, uh, the civilization and the leader. So we'll just leave them with the beard. I think it, it, it might become something like how he has plus four combat strength when not in a golden age against civilizations not in a golden age. It would be plus four combat strength when, without a beard against civilizations yeah. without a beard. Ooh. Ooh. The well, black community could take care of that for us. Yeah, they could. <laughs> yeah, All right, so here's that warning you were warning us about. So do not make martial displays on my border. Or, or maybe we will. Let's go ahead and declare war on him. I like his sassy head tilt there. He's just, you know, got his arms crossed and does this little head tilt at us. <laughs> it's great. That is. So yeah. we need to go and look at Bursa. And Bursa has finished its walls. Oh, Are we worried yes, about they did. that? All right. So, um, Ooh, we could snatch that, snatch that builder. Just go ahead and grab that right now. <laughs> <laughs> Carl wants builder. all the civilians. I it's mean, like leaving money on the it, table. It's, it's, a, it's a weak uh, horseman, one shot, easy snag. Yep. And here we're demonstrating the score from, the from, score That's from awesome. having your commander nearby. So we definitely want to get our battering ram into position. And then protect it. Yes. And are we going to need to uh, put this under siege and get a, a combat unit all the way down here? I think that would be helpful. Well, the horseman won't be able to get there, get this there turn. right this turn but it'll so we'll help just, next turn so the next turn is when we're going to actually start doing significant damage um, the the uh, unit in the back can go ahead and make a range yeah attack. i would just totally yeah. nice part about being having immortals is the range attack even though they are melee units 
So are you gonna bring it down? Yeah, like, okay. got across the river here. Yep. He does have a warrior up by us. Looks like that's levied by a city state. Uh, scroll up. Scroll then. up on the map. Oh, Ooh. Well, we can have our reinforcements deal directly with that. Just gonna try to sneak it in and get run over by a chariot. That's uh, that's awesome. Okay, let's uh, let's we'll leave those guys there. All right, new, yeah, there you go. Builders are gonna be able to fix that up. And are we happy with that position? Uh, He's affecting everybody right now. Yeah, I'd that like works. to see it yeah, better. That does make better. a really juicy tile for him to stomp on, though. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't have anything to stomp with. It does yeah, there's no, well, he could. Yeah, nice second. Yeah. Yeah. How much gold does he have? Uh, not enough. Not enough. Not enough, yeah. 182? No, that's point. 65, not enough. Okay, so let's, let's our turn, we'll go there. All right. Yeah, just cross the river, and then we'll shift that immortal. Yeah, if you move that immortal down, we'll get that siege in. Yes, there you go. Do that ranged. Nice. Finish it off with the chariot. I think we'll be able to do that. And we'll wrap it there. So we have promised some information about the specifics of the release tomorrow. Okay. Well, let's. So uh, as soon as we take Bursa, I think we can get to that. We do have a question before we do that, though, which is, uh, what is Nader Shah's agenda? So maybe we want to take a moment in Noble Encyclopedia and take a look at Nader Shah's agenda real quick. Okay, like civilization like with a higher amount of land units. Dislike civilizations with a low amount of land units. So he wants to see you with a big land army, not necessarily a high tech one or a powerful Somewhat one. Somewhat similar to Cleopatra's army, uh, Cleopatra's agenda, but focus solely on land units. Okay, all right. Well, that's uh, that's important. All right, so. We've wrapped this up. We have taken that city. Unfortunately, it is in a little bit of uh, an unsettled state right now, but we could certainly boost the loyalty we'll, we'll by go ahead and, yeah, move a governor assigning down Magnus down there. Yep. And, and, yep, next step is Istanbul, and that'll be fantastic. All right, so Ed, thank you very much for playing through those. So we do have some more information to share with you before we go, but we have a couple of things that we want to, uh, to, to sort of tell you guys about as we come back. Um, we, are, we do have some other streams coming up, do we not? Uh, and one of them is a, a fight night between you guys. <laughs> so um, yeah, that will be one of, the, one of the last few streams, so it will not be the next one. But these streams are all happening the, in 2023. Yes, yes, and the anger level and the hostilities and the denouncement may, may build as we get closer and closer to that. So We already saw us butting heads a little bit today, disagreeing over the decisions with the city. Uh, it's, I'm not used to having Ed drive, so that was... Well, it's good, yeah. because if I let you practice every time, I'm in trouble, so yes. Okay, so we've also got a quick look at the leader pack uh, that's coming out. Today, for example, we were on the great commanders, Tokugawa, Nader Shah, and Suleiman the Magnificent. So these are the other leaders who are available in the leader pass. So you guys have already released the great negotiators. Here's what else you have to look forward to. Correct? Yeah, absolutely. And so uh, with the great negotiators pack, mm -hmm. um, that went out. We were able to address a few of the things that the community had pointed out to us. Um, there were some like text errors and things like that that got fixed. But we did not uh, have time in doing that first pack to get some to some of the um, more significant um, sort of problem areas that we wanted to address as we work our way through the leader pass. With tomorrow's release, we are starting to get to some of those. So do you have patch notes for me, Ed? Are you trying so to say you have patch notes? There are actual patch notes. They exist, they're in my hand. I'm not going to like hold them up to the camera, but we will go through them briefly here right now. So just go through some of them. We're going to release them in full to the community tomorrow. So Ed, why don't you tell us what some of your favorites are? So the key thing to keep in mind is that we really want to um, 
get the game in as stable a place as we possibly can throughout this period so that by the time we get to March and the, the final pack that we just saw up there on the screen is released, um, you know, the game is as solid as we possibly can make it. So the focus up until this point in time has been on crash fixes and stability um, and making sure that any time we're getting those reports that, that you know, maybe a game has crashed somewhere, that we're looking into it and trying to get those fixed um, up as, as uh, you know, securely as we possibly can. So that is the bulk of it. And when you get your patch notes tomorrow, the community's going to look at it and it's going to say, addressed a number of reported crash and stability issues. That's actually the focus of what we've done for this, for this patch. But that's super important. That really is where our priority is. Mm -hmm. Now, we know that there also are some gameplay um, items that the community has wanted to uh, have us take a look at. And so I'll just quickly go um, through the, the three primary ones that they'll see in the patch notes tomorrow. Sure. Um, and we're not saying that we're done with the gameplay fixes. Those are going to continue to, to roll in as we get deeper and deeper into the, le the leader pass so the community has things that they think maybe we haven't seen. Uh, we're, we're out there on the forums all the time. So I think we have seen everything, but we encourage them to make sure they're sharing the, any information that they want to with us on those items. Okay. So the types of things that they'll see uh, in the game tomorrow, probably the number one significant one is that there was um, a proclivity within our AI to focus very, very heavily on science as the game progressed. And at some point in time, it could actually lead to such a strong focus on science that the AI would bankrupt themselves mm -hmm. and lead themselves in just not a good state to run their empire anymore. Mm -hmm. So that has been throttled back. Um, and the approach of the AI that you'll see, this, this applies to pretty much all the games that the community will see. Yeah. Is, is in a much more balanced state. Um, that chance to sort of tip over the edge on science, that's out of there now. Okay. So, so that's the one fix that probably most people will notice no matter what they're doing with the game. Okay. The other two fixes that we wanted to mention, one, there was a specific problem with our Canadian leader, Wilfred Laurier's Great Best West mm -hmm. um, ability. Yes. Uh, there were certain types of terrain tiles where that was not applying properly. That's been corrected. And then the last thing we want to mention is that if you're playing in the dramatic ages mode, there was one policy card, which is the culture industry policy card, that if you adopted that, then all of a sudden your uh, district construction time started going haywire a little bit. Okay. That's been fixed. Awesome. Very good. All right. So stay tuned tomorrow for all of the patch notes uh, that'll come out for that. We've got a couple of pieces of uh, community content that we want to come back to you guys with. Just uh, to close up this show, because you are, in fact, the coolest community in gaming. Uh, this first one is called The Price of Management, which I love. Uh, it might look like it says, Sacrificed Barbarians, but it actually says, Automate Exploration. And I know, Ed, you were, you were the original holdout on, on automating exploration. So I thought you, would, you in particular would get Yes, a, a I, I immediately chuckled as soon as I saw that. And then we have a comic from Trying Times uh, talking about what it is to talk about civilization, all of the 100% historical things that happen, uh, like Grand Columbia trading with Byzantium and the Aztecs uh, with nuclear fusion. So uh, yeah, totally. Don't forget to tell your social studies teacher about the time that the Americans uh, beat the Persians uh, at the end of the classical era and how it boosted them into the Renaissance. because. Civ is perfectly historical. So we saw something pretty similar to that today. And yes, we, we, we did. did, we did, absolutely. So thank you guys very much for coming out today. Ed Beach, uh, lead designer of uh, Sid Meier's Civilization VI. Carl Harrison, designer for Sid Meier's Civilization VI. Thank you. Appreciate you guys uh, coming out and playing with us today, showing off the great commanders. Our it's pleasure. great to have you uh, back in the studio with us, Pete. Yes. Thanks, thanks very much. And I'm Pete Murray. I've been your host for the stream today. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. Follow Civilization on all of your favorite social media channels. And uh, we'll see you guys in the new year.